Victoria 2 Heart of Darkness. If you're wondering why I'm speaking really, really soft right now, uh, my mom wants to be in bed, so I'm trying not to wake her. So, um, just a couple things have happened. Um, we're about a couple days off from where we were last time. It's only because, you know, I have the liberty of skipping and I have things. So, as you know, we were making tanks and I realized tanks count as artillery. So, I quickly realized, oh shoot, we still need our cavalry for units. So, right now, I also um, cut down the actual how many tanks we're actually going to be spending to make them. But, so, I'm actually going to make some French, from French, um, what are they called? Husses? Husses, these more advanced units, more better than the um, cavalry. So that we can have a better army and a better standing. So that if we go to war against people, we'll have, you know, a good army. So, um, I'm starting to get this whole, like, balancing thing correct. Um, hopefully, everything will work out correctly, okay? Next thing, um, we have all these things over here, kind of badly spread, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave, like, one take here to, like, help guard. I'm going to send the rest of these tanks into the, here to guard this place, and I think that's basically it. Um, except, oh yeah, there's one other thing I have to go to, and that's party loyalty. So I was looking up the, um, party loyalty, I realized that a lot of our people are mainly communists. Which, in all essence, scares me. So, what I'm going to do is put my top three regions, except for Lancaster, Connecticut, because that's not really one of my regions. Molster, no, not Molster. Um, Molster, I'm still encouraging automotive technology business. Um, Molster can still grow. There, Bretonge, full region. Um... You know, I'll do in the top three regions, and what we're going to try to do is turn my nation back into a thriving, um, thriving conservative government. Just like America, except Wyoming's communist. And so is Chicago, and Florida. That's actually really quite weird, I've never seen that before. And apparently there's lots of fascists right here. Let me see. That is awesome. So, yeah, let's just begin the game. So, oh yeah, um, also off screen, I decided to see how many alliances I could get without, you know, people doing things, so I got an alliance with the UK and, and Japan, so that means I'm a lion, I have an ally list with, with France, England, USA, and Japan, plus Italy, so I have four of the five, of the four of the eight allies, on my side, gonna fight with me, well, probably wouldn't because of line system, but they'd probably at least go with me most of the time to, like, do different wars, and, you know, I think that's pretty awesome. So then, the only sides that are really shaping up to be is the, um, Chinese, Germany, and Sweden. I guess, if there was ever a great war, I think that'd be the new side. So, anyways, let's continue. And, I'm hoping that our government is, oh, I should fix this right now. I'm gonna make sure that we are making money, so that just in case if there's like some kind of economic collapse, we don't have to deal with it, and yeah, we have tons of new soldiers being made every second, I mean we have our pre-built battleship plan, which was actually pretty good until I realized that we didn't actually need it, which was bad, okay, and what are we gonna get next, um, hmm, I think we actually need to get some, um, is there anything in the industry that we might need? Um, not really. So what I think we're going to need, just in case, you know, um, our ROG outputs decrease again, and, you know, we have really bad economics, because we really do, um, what we're going to do is move everything up so that we have a really, really stable economy. And Vodor is still increasing, and, oh, I also improved all the, like, forts on this level, over here, you know, just in case if Germany and us ever went to war, we would have a good advantage. And, oh my goodness, Great Britain's army stinks. I mean, literally stinks. I mean, if we went to war with Great Britain right now, I would have no doubt that we would smoke them. Because we actually have a decent sized army over here. Okay, so you guys go right here, and we're going to help you guys combine with some of our other troops that have recently given up their forces. And over here, so, we have... Artillery being balanced. Romania. Romania is going to try to be... We're trying to get Romania back in our sphere. And you're having difficulties because it keeps having a revolution. 
its government is pretty unstable right now, so, um, you know, I, sometimes I debate if it's even worth doing it, but then I think, you know, it's better that we own Romania, or at least trying to own Romania, than some other country trying to do that, so he's going to do that. Um, so this is the one problem with growing the administration power, is that it eventually causes problems like that, so what I'm going to do is, hmm, I don't want to hire taxes anymore, um, Oh yeah, and this is this is also one of the reasons why we're having difficulties. It's because of our social spending. Which I didn't realize was that high until very recently, so um we need to kind of spread this out like I'm imagining that this is like artillery, so this needs to have three, this needs to have like two right here. Um and wait. Let me just get my soldiers. These are my only tanks that have apparently been built so far. It's so exciting. Um, so let's see if I balance it out. So these three will go to nine, six, seven. Okay. I think this would be more deserving. For here I'll divide these two up and and send half the tanks over to over here and half the tanks over there. There, now we have a kinda balanced army. With tanks now included into our Battle strategy, this war, wars with future nations will be cake. But, not, actually I'm not entirely sure because I still have to completely balance these things out. And, I'm, since, since I still don't have enough army yet, like enough, um, enough tanks yet to like do anything, or like to really replace all my mil military and the meteor stri strikes Tung Jinja about one year earlier, and, Apparently, Romania is going to try something. What do you guys try? Um, I'm hoping that no one else joins this, this crisis. Because maybe we could just make it pass. Tensions dissipate. Yeah, no one seems to be wanting to join this crisis. So, but anyways, we're just going to be trying to um, increase our... Just kind of relaxing and just kind of paying for, you know, inevitable maybe war with some other nation. Which, you know, there is a war plan already set in motion, it's called Kill Belgium, but they're right now um, on kind of a low priority list, but that means that they're going to be impossible, and yeah, it seems like no great power really wants to join the independence of this nation, which is good because Romania should be a united sphere. I don't even know how the rebels gain control. Um, that actually is kind of concerning because that means I may have to go in and go destroy them. Um, yeah. It's just kind of disconcerting. Okay, we have more dreadnoughts being built. I might stop at like 20 or 30 dreadnoughts because I don't think my economy can handle it past that point. And yeah, I don't think any world power is really interested in this. In this crisis, yeah. Yeah. No one was interested in it. And did Romania stay the same? Yes. Romania stayed the same. So that crisis amounted to about nothing. So, other crises that I hope will fire off is the Albanian crisis, which will then which will then be so that we can free Albania from the Ottoman oppressions. Because as we all know, we've been wanting for a long, long time to free Albania, because one of our fans, one of my fans, just said, hey, free Albania. I was like, okay. You know, it's one of our, like, major things we have to do, and you know what? It's one of those things I'll do. So, anyways, we have our economy. Doing great. Um, how's our infrastructure? Oh my goodness, our infrastructure is so great. It's like one of the best. The Germans beat us in it. How did the Germans beat us in infrastructure? That does not make any sense. Russia is a complete wasteland. Um, and we got our first plane. Yay! Okay. Um, I also built, I think, a factory, another factory in um in a place. So it's really quiet. Interesting. Okay, so we have to. Um, what do we have to do? Intervene immediately. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been thinking that maybe we should um, um, provide like a choke point right here. Let's see. Provide yeah, provide like a choke point right here, so that just in case if um. Japanese over here ever decide to declare war on me, I would have enough, um, I would have enough men to deal with them, so what I'm going to do is go to my Asia Sphere, 
No, not like Afghan Sphere. Asia Sphere. I, I can't actually build. Okay, I can't build Elite Guard, but I can build these guys, which would be pretty good because considering most. Because we want to make sure that if the Chinese were ever to invade us, we'd have a good army to fight against them. So let's build some in Song. Um, I'm not sure if any of these are actually in China, so I'm not going to make any. Um, man, we could build so many in Africa. Which is, you know, I really should start capitalizing on African troops. Uh, we could build tons and tons of them in Africa again. Um, but yeah, actually, it seems like we can't, so maybe what I'll do is I'll spread. Because definitely, if we ever want to, if we ever got in a battle with China, we want to make sure they do not expand past this point, because otherwise we definitely die. So, that's going to be my army that's going to try to protect against any Chinese, uh, China forces. <laughs> yeah, they have a big daunting task. I might even, holy, okay. So now that we have, these things are really bad. Now that we have our armies, I'm going to spend a couple minutes off screen to, um, check my volume and to check, um, I'll, uh, uh, I'm going to start dividing these elements, so see you guys in a little Okay, back. Um, I did all the rearranging, so you can see what I did in a second, and I think we can now add Brazil back into us, right? Yes, we can. Yay, Brazil, after another revolution of attorney against us, it's finally back under our control, and does it allow capitalist... It does allow capitalist movement. So, we, what we might do is, um, is try to control the Brazilian government, and... Hmm... Opening... Let's just try... Oh yeah, we own the entire Brazilian government, I just remembered that. I mean, the entire industrial score of Brazil. <laughs> I just remembered. That's awesome. <laughs> That's so awesome. It didn't even cost us that much either, that's the funny thing. Like, you would think it cost a lot to own the entire industrial score of a nation. But it really does not cost us anything more than just a couple cents. Oh, comparatively to our massive amount of influx of money. Okay, and we need to shut down this factory that's causing quite uh, strife in my administration. There it is. But we shouldn't have ex okay. We shouldn't have explosive factories anymore. We should not have any clipper factories. Okay, shut. Yeah, we should not have any clipper factories. Um. This is fine. Um, that's fine. Um, these are definitely okay. Wow, they're employing a lot of people. Um, that's a lot of people in just one. Dang, I have a lot of people in just this one. I'm gonna have to check out this region and see how many people are actually in it. Okay. Um, we have airplanes being made. We just don't have the ability to make airplanes. Um, airplanes. Yeah, we are. I'm guessing we're probably going to be the biggest producer of airplanes, like, I mean, look at the transports, like, I still don't think anyone's built any more tanks. Yeah, Switzerland and Canada are the only places, but airplane power? Um, I am the biggest. That's good. So that when people start, when people start thinking of me, they'll think of France and their immediate airplane power. Airplane power, yeah. Okay, and... I will try not to enact any more reforms because any more reforms at this point would probably demolish my nation. Demolish, demolish my nation. So we don't want to do any more of those. And um, right now, let me see if these are all balanced correctly as I wanted them. Um, this one's not exactly balanced, but it's better than normal. Okay. Let's see. Seven. Okay, I should include one more unit over there. Okay, that should be balanced. Okay, now that we have a good standing over here, um, you know, maybe we really, I think we destroyed way too many of our armies in the Great Purge. I'm going to call it the Great Purge because that sounds really awesome. So what I'm going to do is um, start rebuilding some of our armies. Like, in Europe, I'm going to try to make sure they're all in Paris, by the way. One, three, four, so four, five, six, okay, if there's six, that means there's going to be about two hostels, not in Africa, that'd be really stupid if they were all in Africa, you know what, I'm just, I'm going to create them all in Paris, two, and then if I could, I'd create two tanks, okay, so, and you guys, I'll move you guys right here, and you guys will then be blocking up the region right there, and yeah, 
uh, the peace the peaceful time is sometimes a little bit too peaceful. And I have just a random husk girl right over there and I feel too lazy to go pick it up, so random husk girl, yay! Oh my goodness. Electrical power is about to come to us. It's, it's gonna be really advanced full because then I'll I think that'll launch our economy up again. Yep, our economy got launched up again and I'm gonna build more advanced rail system because apparently we're falling behind in rail systems. I never even knew we could fall behind in rail systems. We were the ones who first integrated rail systems. So, yeah, apparently we have to do that. And one of our spheres of influence, Romania, it seems like Romania is somehow keeping alive this time. So, we're going to use this opportunity to do, to do as much as we can. But it's not really going to help us because Romania... I feel like Romania is just going to break away. And I know, I know, I know. I'm trying to finish up, okay? Um, we're back everyone, we're trying to, we're trying to uh, do things and apparently there's this new country over here that freed itself from, um, from Romania called Ruthenia. I wish them luck in the independence congress and Poland, we are nearing our goal of Poland I think, no, 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 we finally, after years and years of fighting, Poland is finally back under our sphere. This is a joyous occasion. That means the Polish and I are BFFs, and with all these aligning systems, the non this is this is basically divided into a French world and a non-French world. The non-French world seems to have a little bit more trouble than the French world, because the French world has just so much more. I mean, the only competition is really the Chinese indus industry, but um, I'm smoking them. <laughs> And I'm beating everyone in every single category. Right now, this is probably the golden age of France. There is no one else bigger than us. We are completely and utterly being the bosses of everyone. Like, I'm gonna move my soldiers over there to the border. Because I'm gonna there's gonna be some soldiers. Yeah, all the soldiers are gonna pop up right here. So we don't really need to be like watching that place just intently. And yeah, right now it's just today is just a great day for like most of the world. I mean, it's not many things. I mean, I could enact some really good reforms, but no, I'm not. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. Seriously, this is. I think this was. I think this is the last time we're ever gonna react reforms. And Serbia, we can add Serbia now to our sphere. That's so great, so bad, and I'm gonna stop influencing Serbia as much. So there we go. Okay. Okay, about that. Sorry, my mom had to. Me, and my mom had to do some, some things, and I should be back now for the rain, remainder of this time. So right now we're like one of the biggest populations in the world. Um, the only people that yeah the, the only people that are coming up on us are the Americans, but that's only because America likes gets one of the biggest population boosts out of any country I've ever seen. Like they get twenty or sixty percent of their population from immigrants, which is like crazy. So and we are mostly most of our people are French born. Like we don't quite have a fifty percent majority, but most of them are. And a lot of them are Irish. <laughs> Those dying Irish. We have lots of drinkers in our land, laddie. And right now, well, right now it's just, this is a very peaceful time. Except for the sweetest liberation of Northern Finland. That's not exactly the most peaceful times, but somehow Sweden's holding in there and might actually win this one. Which is crazy to think about, but, you know, it makes sense. I mean, Russia's demobilized. Um, there's been a power, power vacuum, and, you know, things just happen. It's just, things just happen, I mean, oh my God, so many things in this world, or in this game, I just like to find amazing. Okay, and we have our soldiers being, our new soldiers, like, yeah, a new army being made. Um, that might actually kind of balance us out, so that we have an army right there, army right there, army right there. Yeah, and who we, oh, the Prince Belly! Principality of Somalia land. If we add these guys to our sphere then then maybe we'll finally be able to travel to our lands to go get a little tiny territory. So will you guys allow me military access? Wait, wait, we're gonna have to wait a little bit, so I'll come back to that. But oh my goodness, our economy just like jumped like crazy. I don't know what we did. I know it wasn't social spending. Cause I'm not that nice. Because we don't I don't know why we have unemployment needs. Let me just... I'll increase my social spending just because I'm a nice guy. But... Yeah, I hate social spending. 
But we, yeah, we seriously don't need to be spending that much on our economics. And apparently some French communists said, hey, let's try to revolt. And one of the least, you know, that's one of my least scared places for revolts. Seriously. And anything else that might be of importance? Not really much. Oh, there's a little bit over there. Of course not. Okay, flash, flashpoint tensions, and we just gained our railroad over here. Um, I'm gonna see military access, they will not access. Okay, I'm gonna have to increase our relationships a little bit. Okay, and we railroad. Okay, hmm. What else do we need? Um, we don't need that. Maybe we should, hmm, centralize the. Um, you know, maybe we'll get this, just so that all of our colonies will have at least a good, um, 20%, you know, um, grab along with France, Guadalupe, you know, at least 20%, that way we can kind of grow, at least you need to to adapt, and that way we can kind of grow. I mean, we really don't care about our colonies and how, like, organized they are. I'm gonna be... I hate, I hate to be honest about our nation, but we really don't. Oh, um, they're just kind of there. They're just, they're there to make us money and to support our industrialization. So, you know, it seems to be them, but that's just really our goal. And we got Siam. Oh yeah, Siam was pushed out of our sphere. So think of a rebellion. So we're going to try to get them back into our sphere because they do, they're supposed to be in our sphere. They're Siam. It's one of like the regions, France actually originally conquered. And we got some really bad regions closed up. I'm gonna see if one of my factories maybe want to open it up again. And I'm actually I just realized how inefficient this way is. Like making soldiers. So what I might do is nah. I like this inefficient way. We grow very slowly and apparently there's a new crisis brewing and it's gonna be with Poland. And instantly no matter what happens, I'm joining it. Because me and the Poland are like BFF, and we have the Italians, and how's Great Britain? Great Britain, we're allies. We're not allies? What happened to me and Great Britain's allies? Okay, so somehow we, we're not allies anymore. And, okay. You know what, it seems like I won't be able to gain. Yeah, it seems like this is not... This is not going to be, um, just, let's just, let's just go to peace terms. I can accept, yeah, I can accept a good infamy here, but this is not going to, this is not going to, this is not going to end. I can only see that we are on the losing side of this war. Like, for, I hate to admit, but for once, we really are on the losing side. And there's not much we can really do forward, uh, 20% socialist. See, I mean, look at all these socialist events. Why am I so socialist? Why is my country so socialist? Um, I really don't, I personally do not want to get into a great war again this soon. I kind of want to still chill it out. Uh, and they call, just has to give me some regards, so. Will you guys accept peace offer? No. Seems like they will not end it until some of these other two countries go in. I'm trying to suggest oil, yay. I'm trying to suggest so that we can get out of this, because, you know, I usually like to fight for Poland, but, um, there's a certain point where you realize, you know, it's not worth it, I guess is the best way I can put it, and this would certainly be one of those times I can't exactly, you know, drop everything I'm doing and, you know, stop my plan for invading Belgium to go help Poland. I mean, if it was against, like, just Sweden, or maybe against just China, maybe then I would join, but it's still, it's just, I, I don't want to fight against England and Germany and Sweden, and, you know, as much as the, as much as I believe in the Italian people, hmm, yeah, I know, I'd be fighting against this entire sector. And Austria can still raise a heap of an army, so I know they would be pretty effective in this war. So, yeah, this would not... No, this would not fly. This is not gonna fly. And, oh my goodness, my cap... Dang, my... 
wow, my industrialists are really, really good at this. They already upgraded all my factories. And all my land, wow. They're good. And the National Bank Act, um, we'll initiate that because we are imperialist and we love everything that's just nationalized. The word nationalization makes us feel really good. Um, colonial migration. I'm not really concentrating on that. Doctrine fascism. See, these aren't really technologies I necessarily need at this point. Um, most of these are just kind of like, eh. They're one I wanted, so. You know, eh, we might as well get the colonial migration. I mean, at the very least, it's going to help with our inefficiency, which might, you know, help us with our Irish problem, which I never thought we had an Irish problem until recently. Okay. And our army is growing over here. Which is good. It's almost down to six soldiers, so that'll be good. And the prices, I think, is almost there. Italy is taking its sweet time. Um, I don't know why they would do this. I'm already saying I want to capitulate. Can they accept this offer? Okay. There we go. So we got out of that war. Um, I'm sorry those people who wanted me to go to Poland, but want me to go to Poland and fight for them. I would normally do that. You guys all know that. But we all know that there's a certain limit to where you have to um, fight for it. And you know, I love Poland as much as any guy. But seriously, that would not help. And there's apparently another war that's apparently going in. And that's a call of the Italian Liberation Istria. Like, who's in the war so I don't have to. Okay, well, this would actually put us on the winning side of the war. Uh, Don Schnink. I love you, Don Schnink. Okay, this is actually put us on the winning side of the world, because we have Germany, Italy. Yeah, this is... Okay, this is going to be for next time, people. Look forward to the war for Austrian aggression, where we'll be taking the helm, because we're the leader of the world, and trying to fight against all these powers. Is is Henshaw the real leader of this war? That'd be really funny. So, anyway, see you guys next time.